This is Crime, Mr. Wade, bringing you the stories. Stay tuned for a lot more. Today's unfortunate story is about a Samuel Burrell Kennison, known as Sam Kennison. Born December 8th, 1953, died April 10th, 1992. He was an American stand-up comedian actor, a former Pentecostal preacher. He performed stand-up routines that were characterized by intense, sudden tirades, punctuated with distinctive screams similar to charismatic preachers. Samuel Burrow Kennison was born in Yakima, Washington on December 8, 1953. The son of Marie Florence and Samuel Earl Kennison, a Pentecostal preacher. The family moved to East Peoria, Illinois when Kennison was just three months old. At the age of three, Kennison was hit by a truck which left him brain damage. His father pastored several churches around the country, receiving little income. Kennison had two older brothers, Richard and Bill, and a younger brother, Kevin. His parents divorced when Kennison was 11, after which his brother Bill went to live with his father, while Kennison stayed with the rest of the family, against his protests. Bill described this as the root of much of Sam's anger. Kennison's later extended and attended East Peoria Community High School in East Peoria. Kennison and his brothers emulated their father by becoming Pentecostal preachers between the years of 1968 and the years of 1969. Kennison attended Pentecostal Bible Training Center, an interdominational and accredited three-year Bible located in Salisbury Center, New York. His mother married another preacher and moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Kennison lived for a while. He preached from the age of 17 to 24, and recordings of his sermons revealed that he used a fire and brimstone style, punctuated with shouts similar to the ones we later used on his stand-up routines. His brother Bill, however, noted that, ironically, he had no stage presence, and he was not very successful at making money from preaching. After Kennison and his wife were divorced, he abandoned preaching and took up comedy. Kennison began his career in Houston, Texas, where he performed in small clubs. He became a member of the comedic group at the comedy workshop known as the Texas Outlaw Comics that included Bill Hicks and Ron Schock, Riley Barber, Steve Epstein, Andy Huggins, John Fernetti, and Jimmy Pineapple. Hicks cited Kennison as a major influence on his comedic style, noting that he was the first guy I ever saw to go on stage and not in any way ask the audience to like him. In the year of 1980, Kennison moved to Los Angeles hoping to find work at the comedy store, but was first employed as a doorman. He soon developed a cocaine and alcoholic addiction, quickly progressing to freebasing cocaine and struggled to gain a foothold in the business until his brother Bill moved to Los Angeles to help manage his career. Kennison's big break came on HBO's Rodney Dangerfield's ninth annual Young Comedian Special in August, the year of 1985. Sam Kennison, Mr. Kennison, specializes in a grotesque, animalistic howl that might be described as the primal scream of the married man. Kennison would later appear in Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School in the year of 1986. Howard Stern purchased the film rights to Kennison's biography written by Kennison's brother at one point in the year of 2008, reporting that HBO would make Brother Sam with Kennison being played by Dan Fogler. In an interview with Sam's brother and manager, Bill Kennison, Bill mentioned him in film deals that were in development at the time of his death. One such deal was a film with Arnold Schwarzenegger and another with Rick Moranis. 
In the year of 1988, his youngest brother, Kevin, shot himself at the age of 28 with devastated Sam. Kenison acquired much of his material from his two first marriages to Patricia Atkins, 1975 to the year of 1980, and Terry Marze from the year of 1981 to the year of 1989. He began a relationship with dancer Malika Soe toward the end of his marriage with Marze in the year of 1990. Soe alleged she was raped by a man Kennison had hired as a bodyguard while Kennison was asleep in his house. The bodyguard stated that the sex was consensual. The jury deadlocked it in the subsequent trial and the charges were later dropped. On April 10th, the year of 1992, Kennison was driving his Pontiac Turbo Trans Am when it was struck head on on Needles Highway northwest of Needles, California by a pickup truck driving by a young man named Troy Pearson. Prior to the crash, Pearson had been drinking alcohol. The pickup truck crossed the center line of the roadway while trying to pass another vehicle and moved into Kennison's lane. Kennison and his wife were on their way to Laughlin, Nevada to perform at a sold-out show at the Riverside Casino. After the crash, Kennison appeared stable with one minor visible facial wounds. He got out of his vehicle and sat down the side of the road where he soon died from internal injuries. His head smashed the windshield as he was not wearing his seatbelt. He was 38 years old. His wife got a concussion in the collision, but later recovered after being taken directly to a hospital in Needles for treatment. An autopsy found that Kennison sustained multiple traumatic injuries, including a dislocation in the cervical spine, a torn aorta, and torn blood vessels in his abdominal cavity, which resulted in his death within a few minutes of the crash. Kennison reportedly said to no one in particular, as his last words stated, Why now? Then he paused, asked, But why? And after another pause, said, Okay, okay, okay. A friend who was with him at the time later recalled to whatever voice was talking to him, gave him the right answer, and he just relaxed with it. Pearson pled guilty to one count of vehicle manslaughter with gross negligence. He was sentenced to one year of probation and 300 hours of community service. Pearson also had his driver license suspended for two years in connection with the collision. On April 15th, year of 1992, at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Burbank, California, a funeral service was held for Kennison's body, was buried in a family grave plot of Memorial Park Cemetery in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His gravestone is inscribed. In another time and place, he would have been called a prophet.